In the previous section, you learned about the importance of ethical considerations such as avoiding harmful biases within the domain of machine learning. Together with previous modules on various algorithm classes, fundamental concepts of machine learning, data, evaluation, and so on, you are getting a good overview on a diverse set of methods and tools to use in machine learning. But how does this work in practice? Even though we covered how to train and evaluate a model, this was still done in a very experimental environment. But what if we want to use machine learning in the context of businesses? In this video, we will cover two process models that are commonly used in the business context, CRISPDM and Human in the Loop. Let's start off with CRISPDM. CRISPDM is short for Cross-Industry Standard Process for Data Mining. Well, that's a bit cumbersome, but it also isn't really too much of importance to us. CRISPDM serves as the base for a data science process and contains several individual phases. First, we start at the business understanding. In any business context, it is important to start with understanding what the customer actually needs. In the end, we can build the fanciest model, but if our customer does not want to use it, it is somewhat useless. To get a good understanding of the needs of your customer, you typically do the following. Understand and determine your customer's business objectives, assess the current situation, including available resources and project requirements, determine the goals of the project, and set up a good project plan. This is really the base for everything that follows. Next, we have the phase of data understanding. As the name suggests, this is all about getting a good understanding of your data. This does not only include the quality of your data and details from an explorative analysis, but especially also what data is available. You will also need to collect all data that you want to use in the project. Together with the data understanding, we have the phase of data preparation. This follows quite closely to what we have already discussed in Module 2 using exploratory data analysis tools. Important in the business context, in addition, is to clean data. For instance, in case the data needs to be anonymized or duplicates must be removed. You then, of course, want to integrate the data in whatever environment meant for further machine learning processes. Now, after the data has been collected and prepared accordingly, we can finally begin with the phase modeling. Similar to what you need to do in any experimental project setup, you first have to define which algorithms you want to use, which learning paradigm fits your task setting, how you want to evaluate the models, and so on. It is important to follow a good test concept, with correct dataset splits to ensure you can evaluate the model properly later into the process. The creation of a machine learning model is then rather simple, as there are plenty of libraries available for you to use. The second to final phase of the CRISPDM process is evaluation. This does not include assessing a model's performance within your experiment setup, as this is part of the modeling phase. The phase of evaluation is especially targeted at evaluating your model's performance against business criteria. Depending on the size and the scope of a project, this can involve multiple departments outside of the one you're working with. Following up on the topic of bias and ethics, it is also quite likely that the legal department is involved at this step. After the evaluation phase, you reach the decision point in the process. You will have to ask yourself, based on the evaluation, whether or not your model is ready to be deployed or whether you have to iterate further. In some cases, you will have to start again at defining new business requirements or specifying them in more detail. In case your model is good to go, you reach the final phase of the CRISPDM process, the deployment. In business context, the deployment of new software is usually tied to a rigorous deployment plan including specifications about when to push the project to the live environment, any post-go live support that is needed, or any details about ongoing maintenance. While this whole process sounds tedious to begin with, it really just is common business practice that you usually will have to follow anyway. Following everything that you learned in previous models, it should not differ much to what you were doing anyway. In some cases, however, the business might require some additional securities. So let's say your model makes predictions that are just borderline on the side of one class, meaning that the model isn't very confident in what it predicts. In this case, you can make use of a process called human in the loop. So far, we have evaluated models, and whenever they were good enough for our criteria, we would let the model do the predictions and be happy about it. With human in the loop, you add an additional failsafe to your model, where any human expert or user can provide direct feedback to the model. So as an example, let's say your model predicts a certain label, but the confidence for the prediction is rather low. The system detects this using a threshold for a predicted probability and flags the prediction. A human is then needed to interfere, look at the underlying data and the prediction, and correct the model if necessary. Obviously, there is a certain trade-off in optimization of the workflow and confidence in the results. The higher your threshold for the acceptable confidence is, the more interference by humans you will have to accept. And the lower the threshold is, the more time you will be able to save in the process, but the predictions could contain more errors. This process is usually applied for any safety-critical applications, or whenever there is a certain risk to the user or customer. For example, imagine a model that predicts whether or not you are conducting money laundering based in your transactions. This will have a lot of legal implications, so in that case you might want to use the human-in-the-loop process to make sure you're not flagging every person as a criminal. 